Good morning. Good morning. How you doing this morning? I'm doing pretty good. I am. Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. The sun is out where I'm at. Um, I slept well. I'm in my a good frame of mind. I'm thinking, seeing, and still can do. That's 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 something. Cause some people didn't didn't get that this morning. They didn't. And so today we're going to talk about fate. Well, fate. Hmm. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what's going to happen. If we knew our destinies, because there's many in a journey of life, there's a many a destination that we may touch on. We may touch on tragedy. We may touch on pure, pure joy. We may be mediocre for, for much of our lives. We may be. But guess what? We always going to get to the other side of it. And it's how we deal with our fate. How we deal with it. That's our discussion today. You know, I'm so excited about about just just getting up and saying I have something to say. Um, the fact that, 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 that I don't know what I'm going to say all the time. I give myself what I call a kind of like a skeletal little outline. But then I go at it. You know, whatever God places in my head is what I want to discuss around the issue that's being uh, dealt with for the day. And I don't know, but yesterday I kept looking at what was on TV and they were talking about the young man... Uh, that that was killed in uh atlanta and they were talking about you know they had all of these different you know pundits on law enforcement pundits and they were saying what they where they felt the case was going to go but yet and still they didn't know and um one there was one gentleman on two days prior and his his take on it well you know if you take a taser and you use it in such a way it could force people to uh, say that you, you know, you fought against, you know, you resisted. So therefore, that's why that happened. But then there was there was evidence yesterday that no one knew. But they took all of the video footage from, I think they said, eight or ten different uh, locations, you know, from perspectives. You know, because to me, to see something is one thing. To not know anything, that's something else. So when, when it was disclosed yesterday on um, what the results were, it, everyone got a new perspective because they didn't know that. So you never know anyone's. We don't even know our own fate. So certainly they didn't know that they were going to come down with the with the, uh, the the decision of, you know, felony murder. No one knew that. No one. Um, so sometimes we, because we don't know fate, we can't determine outcome. So we have to be in the present moment of understanding just what is and what is, is it, it is. We, we don't know what it's going to be. We just, we pray we're going to be in a position to accept it, to be able to deal with it, to get on the other side of it. And sometimes we don't, but you know, I'm getting ready to ask you the question, are you stuck? Yes, periodically we are all stuck. We're all stuck. We're stuck on what fate brought us. We're stuck on what fate did to us. We may be stuck forever in what the fate, you know, revealed in us or, or stored in us. Because sometimes it, it's not that the situation of the fate doesn't leave us, but the what I would call the residue, it remains with us, you know, such as death of somebody that you love dearly that that residue you always there's a wanting you always have a yearning for somebody you know or some or or could have been you know where you you lived your best life you know having fun doing a particular project or whatever so when when the project is over or the and the situation changed then you you feel it you say wow I wish I still had that I remember playing um certain characters and plays and I had gotten so good at it I ain't gonna lie that after a while you know it's like I could play that character anytime and and still enjoy it pardon me a minute somebody keeps you know jumping on my screen and I have to get them off because then I can't see myself but anyway I could have played that character all the time 
but it was just that it was a character you know and in real life we can't play out what's going to happen to it it just happens to us good morning Juanita good morning my friend Nita um we don't know what's going to happen to us but when it happened to us it happens to us we have to deal with it you know we have to deal with the excitement or this or the or the sadness of situations and sometimes they're really good sometimes they're not sometimes we just good morning cuts sometimes we just have to be on the sideline of saying wow i can't believe that happened to me i can't believe that happened to them because it's not just your own fate it's other people's fate that may ultimately you know be be you may be affected by you know, to me, when the pandemic came, it came, good morning, Joan, it came with this, with this, um, it, with this blanket, good morning, Cassandra, it came with the blanket of fate for everybody, you know, I mean, to, to, to realize that we may be in fashion to be wearing face masks for, for years to come until they get a handle on what, what you know can inoculate this virus what can deal with COVID-19 and and make it where we don't have to be so distant on a social level but currently we have to be you know parted we have to part friends not friendships but just part distance part by distance and so we don't know what our fate is going to be and nobody could have told us you know at the end of 2019 that this was what 2020 was going to be we wouldn't have known it we wouldn't have known it at all. And so here we are. Here we are. You know, I can't, I can't believe we're on June June uh, 18th. And and my goodness. My goodness. We 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 are we are on our way to whatever the fate is going to be towards the end of this year, but they're already projecting that we will be wearing masks for a while. And so all of a sudden, masks have become a part of the wardrobe. You see people, they're styling with them. They're, they, but they didn't know that that would be, none of us knew that this would be part of our new landscape. You know, where we, where, you know, if we saw one person wearing a mask, we were suspicious of what's wrong. We all wear them now. Everybody knows. They know uh, what happened. They, they're, they're aware of it. They're, they, they understand it. So therefore, we look at what is our next fate. You know, I'm, I'm, my prayer is that, is that COVID-19 will go away, the, the death toll will, will stop rising, that, that people will be able to get along. I mean, I have a lot of fates that to me have a more positive spin on them than a negative one. I'm, I'm saying that, that we will shift. Good morning, Deborah. I'm, my prayer is that we will shift from what we're currently in uh, the, from the pandemic to, to panoramas of, of just being able to see and feel and be, that would be good. That would, in fact, that would be great is that we just had our, what I would call our, our freedom again, because to me that, that's, that we've really been, 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 that has been taken away from us. You know, the fact that we just can't go where we want to go and then be in a crowd of people. You know, um, in fact, I, I, uh, this is, this is, I'm be my, in my truth this morning. Um, all my girlfriends canceled coming down for the, uh, jazz festival, uh, downtown here in uh, Pensacola. They said, Sandy, we can't come. We, we're not going to do that. And they always come every year. We try to get together here or someplace else in the country. And they said, we can't do it. We're not going anywhere. We know we, we, we long for, you know, we long for something, you know, and that was, that was, was one of the things that we term, determined that that was the thing that we wanted to put in our bag of, of whatever, you know, every year we get together. And I went down, downtown because I bought my tickets locally. I went downtown and I told them, look, they all canceled. There's no way I'm going to pay, you know, this, this nearly $400 for these tickets where people have already canceled on me. They gave me back my money. I thought that it was going to be uh, a problem, but they said no. You know, we—it's a right because if I'm not going to it, and it, and it's—it's it's not as if no one knows about this pandemic. The pandemic is here, and we need to deal with it. 
but we never know what our fate is going to be. But we have to be able to understand how we get through it and we live on the other side of it, you know. So today we're going to talk about fate and we're going to talk about, <clears throat> we're going to start off with, with a poem. And this poem is by Ella Wheeler Wilcock. And um, it's called The Winds of Fate. I like that. The Winds of Fate. I got it off the internet. It is not mine. It says, uh, one ship drives east and another drives west with the self-same winds that blow. <laughs> Tis the set of sails and not the gales which tells us the way to go. Like the winds of the seas are the ways of the fate as we voyage along through the life Tis the set of a soul that decides its goal and not the calm or the strife. The calm or the strife. The up and the down. The yes and the no. The go forward, go back. It, it, fate, we never know what it's going to be. We never know. So it's always that we're in, we're, we're in a, 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 the middle of either understanding how it went or or we're on the under, other side and we know how it went you know that that's how fate is we don't we have no we there's no way we can determine what our fate is we can't determine it we can pray uh we can certainly uh meditate or we can um you know be be what i call in waiting um but I try not to wait on anything that could. Good morning, Simone. I try not to wait on anything that is negative. I search for the positive. I search for the positive even in the negative, during the negative, and after the negative. Because, because I can't control those things, I really have to look forward to the things that I can control. And I can control my reaction to them. That would be fate. That would be how I deal with my fate. And let's face it, all of us, if we've lived long enough, we've experienced so many things that were horrible to us. Good morning, Sandra. We don't know why we, we experience those things. Sometimes it's, it's like, uh, you, know, you know, sudden death when somebody leaves suddenly. That, that was their fate. But on the, on the tragedy side for who's left behind, that's our fate. We had to deal with that. We understood that it affected us. So it, it's not just the thing that might be tra tragic or the thing that might be very positive. It's how we deal with it. You know, it, it's what, what comes off of us after something that we couldn't control occurs. So when we talk about fate, and everybody, thank you for coming this morning, um, sharing this little space with me. So it, fate, it says when we talk about fate, fate is a development of events beyond a person's control can't do anything with it regarded as determined by a supernatural power meaning that's what that's what the dictionary says that's what marion says marion webster says that that you don't know when it's going to come you know but but something's going to happen you know it may be a positive and it may be a negative okay but it's out of your control you have no control over it we, we can't control if a tornado comes, we can't control if a hurricane comes, we can't control, you know, somebody having, you know, a tragic accident. We can't control any of those things. We can't control even, even sickness, you know, sickness that those of us like myself as a cancer survivor, I couldn't control that. I couldn't control that I, that I was prone to get it. I couldn't control, you know, getting it. Only thing I had to do is keep going back to the doctor and saying something's wrong, something's wrong. And the only thing they told me is that had I not been alert, then they would have just continued because they didn't see anything at first. And so sometimes you have to be in control over the little thing that you can, such as this. Something ain't right. I need to get this together. I need to go and find out what's wrong with me. So I do encourage you if you have any kind of symptoms of illness, you need to go and take care of it. Go to somebody. And even during the pandemic, you still need to go because uh, they are taking, you know, other things going on right now. They're starting to deal with, with other things that aren't as, as uh, essential 
or immediate as the COVID virus has be, be, been, but they're going back to doing routine things like, you know, colonoscopies, you know, mammograms, all those things. So do take care of yourselves during this time. And it says, but, but when we're talking about fate, we're talking about destiny, providence, nemesis, uh, kismet, uh, predestination, chance, Oh, they talk about luck. Um, then uh, serendipity, uh, it says karma and fortune. So all those things really speak to what fate is, you know. Um, and we can't, and because we cannot control it, that means it's it's outside of our our domain. But yet and still, it may affect us. It may come back to us, and so we have to deal with that. And so when we start with the F of fate. We want to talk about the future. You know, fate, no matter who we are, is in our future. It's beyond us. And it says it's the time and period of time following the moment of speaking or writing. Time regarded as still to come. Time to come. Time ahead. Coming times or the hereafter. You know, uh, all that speaks of something that's futuristic to us. But it is our fate, no matter what. Now, we all know that we're going to, to die. We all know that. We all know that, you know. Um, but we don't know when. If we knew when, we'd probably be crazy as heck. Talk my girl next week. God, I don't know what happened to me. You know, you, so, so we, ha we have to stay in what I call the present way of thinking. Because if we thought constantly about our future in, in a negative sense, then we would be debilitated. We would be enabling ourselves to be fearful all the time. So we have to try to, to, to counteract what we think we can control. And the only thing that we can control out of that is that we not, it not be our concentrated effort, you know, where we're constantly trying to predict going forward. You know, we're just going to go into our future, which whatever is due us, whatever's coming our way, even though we don't know it, it will occur. It will occur. The uh, the A of fate is adversity. And um, I don't know why adversity came to thought, but but usually when I'm putting these together, there's a reason. Um, you know, a lot of times when we're talking about our fate, a lot of times people look at fate in a negative sense. Fate could also be positive, but we want to address the negative as well. And I do address the positive in a little bit. But anyway, looking at adversity, it talks about difficulties and misfortune. It's bad luck. It's trouble. It could be someone's hardship. It's their distress, their disasters that occur. It's a misadventure. Could be suffering and affliction, sorrow, misery. It could be a headache. Could be tri tribulation, a woe, a pain, a trauma, a torment, an accident, an accident like shock, an upset, a reverse, a setback, a setback, a crisis, something that could be catastrophe. Good morning, Jean. It could be catastrophe. Uh, it also could be a burden, could be hell, could be stress, and could be travels where you didn't want to go to, dealing with what you didn't want to deal with. So adversity certainly talks about maybe the negative side of our fate. And and so we have to we have to get into that and understand that that our fate sometimes could be a negative. It could be that we lose something, someone uh dear or we lose something it could be money, it could be a house, it could be something major that 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 we need in order to continue living a a fairly decent life. So so that's what that's what our adversity could be. It's not to the point where where it's saying that it, it, it's so catastrophic that you can't get around it. Because I believe all adversities that come to us, we will get around them eventually. We just have to figure out the mechanism to do it in. You know, is it is it prayer? Is it, as I said, is it meditation? Is it, um, some people can sleep it off. They just have to go down into themselves and just sleep through a period. Some people have to go to a, a counselor and talk about it. You know, this this was this has troubled me for so long. It's bothered me. You know, I can't sleep. I can't eat. It's it's really dealt with me um, in a negative way. Not just the loss, but I'm continuing to lose. I'm continuing to lose control of of my fear. You know, my fear has taken over now, or my or my anguish, or my angst, or my 
my uh, distrust, whatever, something occurs. And so we have to really get into what that is all about. The T of fate is temporary. And uh, once again, it was just given to me. The fact that we, we all will go through a fate of some sort or fates. Let's just put it. Let's put that S on it because it, it won't be that we might hit something once, but we'll hit something again and again and again over time, over time or within a period of time. And it's interesting. Yesterday I was watching, I want to say CNN for, for a period, and there was a young man on uh, from, I think he was from Montgomery, Alabama, and he had already lost. I think it was five members of his family to COVID-19. Plus, he still had three brothers in the hospital. Two or three brothers. I don't know. I, I kind of missed because uh, I, I stepped out of the room a minute. So I know at least two are in the hospital still. One is on a respirator. The other one is still uh, not out of the woods. So So it just lets you know that even though you may not be, you know, affected you know by this because you have a family member or someone you know close to you a friend that has COVID-19 that has the, the this virus doesn't mean that it's not occurring and like what he said is that you all need to take this seriously because you need to cover up he said if you don't do it for anybody else do it for me if you're not worried about it for yourself worry about it for me because I'm telling you all of my family has been affected by this. This has been our fate. The fact that, that, you know, five family members are already gone and there might be two or three others in the balance of what before it's over. So we, it, once again, we don't know our fate, but we, but we, if we listen to what other people are saying, we might have a good idea as to the fact that when we go out, we really need to be covered up. But the thing about it is, is even what he's going through, it's temporary. It is temporary, no matter what, no matter what, you know, even, even when you had a, had, have had a death in your family, it may take you a long time to get over it, but the, but the actual first part of the loss, when the loss first hit you, that was the start of, of your turnaround. And it may take you a long time to turn all the way back around to where you're comfortable and you're able to talk about that person or talk about that loss, whatever it is, or whoever it was. But but it may take some time, but it is still temporary. And and and, and temporary is just that, you know. It talks about it's lasting for only a limited period of time, not permanent. It's and it says it's a non permanent, short term, interim, provisional, pro term. Uh, makeshift, you know, it's a feeling, a stand in a brief, a short lived, m momentary, fleeting, passing, and uh, impermanent. It's transient and it's transient. Good morning, Volga. So tra uh, transitory. So it really talks about the fact that that even when we've gone through great losses or we've gone through um, something that is just horrific for us, it may take us a while to get over it. But it's not like your life will continue to be just like that. Eventually, that issue that you're going through becomes a part of your distance. It becomes a part of your past. It becomes a part of your, you know, your, your, what, what you've been through, you know. And, and as I said, launching opportunities in transition, which is a lot, and you go to the Bible, you know, it just says don't look back. It's like you can you, you you have to take forward the memories of what it was you were doing and realize that you because you cannot bring the person back, you cannot bring the situation back or a relationship back or whatever it was. You can't bring it back like it was. Um, and so we have to be able to understand how living in our memories uh, for our future is good. You know, it's like, man, I got good. I can tell you things about my mother that was so hilarious that um, for, and I can tell you for myself, I mourned my mother's loss more when it was when I was cleaning out her apartment and she had just and it was the realization that she would never come back to that place again. Um, my mother loved her apartment and she loved getting up every day and walking eight miles. My mother walked eight miles a day. I'm not there with her yet though. <laughs> Maybe I got about two more years. I'm going to have to get into it. 
but she walked eight miles a day and we used to call her road runner that was her nickname and she walked and i i mourned my mother's you know not passing from this life because she had told me the year before that she was ready to go she was ready to go and live with my dad she said it was the best man she ever had and so sometimes we have to realize that memories like that also keep you solidly placed in going forward because she said she just remembered him he was just always a good man to her and always kind and so when i cleaned out her apartment and i start picking up things that reminded me of our childhood and how she nurtured us and how she loved us and how she always cooked the best meals and was always there when we fell or you know and or, or people were talking about those those children get those children out the street she'd make us go on back out there again yelling at us now to to just stand up for the fact that we were we were good kids and we just wanted to have some fun in the street we weren't bothering anybody but we re, i remembered that so that was it was my fate that she was to leave it was my fate that i was to deal with her however i remember crying more when i cleaned out her apartment that to me really talked about the kind of woman to she was to her children to her husband and the fact that leaving her leaving me i didn't think about the other kids but i'm the baby leaving me was just horrific so i but i mourned her leaving her place more so than i did leave her leaving this life she was ready to go but see she had to tell me that i probably would have dealt differently had she not told me that but I would always tell her, oh, no, mommy, you're going to be here forever. That was a lie. She already knew it. She knew it. So sometimes we have to, we have to realize that whatever we're going to go through, it's a temporary thing to whatever our fate has already dealt us or whatever, whatever our fate will bring us. That's it. That, that's how we're going to live. And, and, and if we're constantly trying to anticipate what our fate is going to be, that's not good. That's not good. That means we're in constant flux constant you know what i would call fear constant anguish i don't want to be any of them i want to just be let me live today you know let me smell the flowers let me let me look at the sky let me you know i i want to be content good morning janice i want to be content in my today i want to be in content in my today i don't want to anticipate anticipate tomorrow where i'm fearful I anticipate tomorrow where i'm where i have great anxiety you know, um, I remember ha having anxiety once. I think it was when I was, you know, finishing up my undergraduate degree. And I remember waking up with this severe anxiety, just didn't know why I felt like that and was just uncertain and stuff. But that's because I was about to graduate from college and I had no idea what I was going to do. And, you know, when they, when you graduated high school, what did they ask you? So what's your plans? You know, what are your plans? What are you going to do? So here I was at that gate again. What are your plans? What are you going to do? Well, you know what? When you're young, you don't know what you're going to do. You don't know. All you know is that you made it through a hurdle of whatever it was you were going through. That's what you know. But you do not know. You do not know what's next. You know, and when and leaving college, I went on to grad school um, at, a, well, I worked for a little bit about a year for my bill for the telephone company and I just hated that I thought that was be the worst thing I could ever do was get stuck there so when I asked you the question are you stuck not there I for I foresaw it in my future that that wasn't it I couldn't stay there I couldn't do it but but I went on to Duquesne University and even at Duquesne University I felt it was too dark whatever the program they were doing in um and counseling, I just felt it was, you know, I remember just being a, a real, just different approach to what I wanted counseling to be like. So I left there. But sometimes you just have to know that you're going to face some times where you don't know what your fate is going to be. But you got to get up every morning with the intention of doing something. With the intention. Trying to go forward. The last letter in, in fate is an E. And I wrote, I, and I have two E's. Okay. It came to me like that. The first E is for enlightening. Because to me, once you've seen something, once you've witnessed something, once you've gone through something, you have been enlightened. It says to give someone greater knowledge and understanding about the subject or the situation. It says it's to inform, to tell, to advise, to, uh, 
to illuminate, to open someone's eyes, to apprise, to brief, and to update. All those things come at us after we've gone through something that we've been faced with. Good morning, Rhonda. But we don't, but we don't have any idea uh, it was coming, but we got to deal with it. We have to deal with it. And so we, deal, we have to go on the other side of what happened to us. How did that affect us? Did, did we cry? Did we fall on our knees? Did, 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 did we wallow in pain? And this always, be, always reminds me of um, people who come too late before someone passes on. And uh, it always intrigued me when I would, pardon my, my, my eyes itching, uh, it always intrigued me that when I had gone to a couple of funerals and I seen some people that were trying to almost get into the casket. And um, I remember watching, um, uh, I think it was, I don't know which the name of the movie was, but it was with Angela Bassett. And, you know, they were doing the scene where the, the young lady was coming down from, and write it in, in there if you know what movie I'm talking about. But it was, a, it was a Tyler Perry movie where she was coming down from Chicago where she had actually, you know, was going to find out who her real father was. And he had actually left her something because he was the love of her her mother's life. So the so it, it, it ends up being that one of the sisters thought that she was the top sister, which she didn't know. She didn't want, she said, I'm the only baby of the family. And so she was going to go into the casket. Oh, daddy, what am I going to do? I'm going to do, I'm going to do. Well, the brother <laughs> pushes her in. <laughs> So sometimes you just never know. You just never know how you're going to deal when somebody leaves here. So you should tell them what you want to tell them now. While they're here, tell them that you love them. I tell my nieces and nephews, I love them all the time. My daughter, we ne even if I'm mad at her, I'm still going to tell her I love her. Because to me, that always knows that love is on top. There's nothing, nothing else, no, regardless of whatever you do, that you still love them you know, uh, no matter what happens, no matter what happens. So anyway, that is to advise people, just to enlighten people. When you find out something that is really terrible, um, you informed, you know, you know how they might have passed, you know how the project fell apart, you know how the relationship fell apart. And sometimes you would never get resolved because you may also not know what happened, not know. So you could know, or you may never know. You know, especially with, 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 with death or with, you know, relationships, whatever it is, if they fall apart, they fall apart. You may never know why, you know, but it's your reaction to them of saying I can go on regardless of what happens. And the other E of, of this word uh, for, for fate is enjoy. It says to take delight or pleasure in. It's to like, it's to love. It's to be fond of, to appreciate, to relish, to adore, to savor, to fancy, rejoice, and uh, of course, to be keen on. All those things talk about our joy. So sometimes once we get over our sadness of things changing, people leaving this world or leaving relationships or finishing a project, we eventually can get to the side where we can enjoy it because we can look back on it and appreciate it or them who are gone for what it was we got. So it, it, in the whole idea of fate, it just talks about the fact that the, we can't control what the fate itself is. We can never control that, ever. But how we react to it is what we can control. We can talk about it being future. We can talk about it being adverse, that we that it could have some really bad things happen. You know, um, we could be losing great things. Or great or some great person in our lives um, but but understand that it is temporary it's not going to stay with us it cannot it cannot stay with us and last thing of course is that we will be enlightened by it and eventually we will take joy in it we will enjoy who they were or what the project was or what the relationship was we can we can take pride in the fact that that we knew them or we knew it, or we experienced whatever it is that we experienced. So all that would be part of the enjoyment of the what I call the other side of our fate. You know, and fate doesn't always have to be bad. It doesn't. Sometimes we didn't know that we could write in, you know, something that maybe somebody would look at and say, hey, look, this this deserves great, 
you know, you know, literal recognition, Pulitzer Prize. We don't know. We don't know. We, but we have to get up every day with the intention of doing something, something with our lives, something for others, and also certainly something for ourselves, that it's worthy of our attention. But we will never, ever know what our fate is. We will not. So getting down to the questions for today, um, it says, the first question is, in regards to fate, it says, how do you handle things out of your control that are results of your fate? How do you handle things out of your control that are the results of your fate? Um, write down how you went through, you know, something, something tragic. Losing, to me, losing a parent was, was tough. But as I told you the other day, someone told me that losing a child was even worse because the order was off. They thought that, the, that there should be something significant about the fact that, 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 that somebody is just gone. You know, I can't believe that. Um, question number two, do you, worry about if, do you worry about your future? Do you? Write it down. And I'm hoping that you have pencil and paper. <laughs> and I love it when you share. If you share this video, that certainly would be so exciting for me um, to try to bring more people into um, this information that I give every day. Question number three, how do you handle adversity as it relates to your fate? How do you handle it? You know, uh, are you somebody that hears something and you immediately go into a tailspin trying to get down to the, the bottom of it or, you know, putting yourself in the mix of, or do you live above it? Because some people don't realize how, how their, the fate they received affected them until, you know, a long period of time. You know, even though it's temporary, but they have to go through it to recognize it. They have to go through it. And it may take them longer to get over it, you know, um, especially if they're being, you know, like what I would call like an investigative sense. You know, um, when my sister, and I never knew my sister had cancer. I didn't. And that was my sister I was the closest to. And I remember her calling me and telling me that she was, um, she was feeling, you know, sick again. And my sister, when we were young, she had sarcoidosis. Um, and I remember being frightened about that because they gave her an operation. And I remember them cutting her from one side of her underneath her chin to the other and leaving. And before that, she, was, she had formed like a sack. And they treated her with what at that time was called cobalt. It was like a, a, I guess it would be the modern day radiation stuff. I don't know. Um, but I, I was really young because my sister, six, six years, seven years older than me. So I didn't know what she was treated as, but, but I was very young, you know, maybe, maybe five or six when that occurred. Well, as she got older, the, the, the situation just changed. It changed to where something was going on that, um, she's needed her throat, her throat stretched. And so in them stretching her throat, it, it just, uh, it really did something to her. And we never knew that she had cancer until her, her daughter and I actually read the, the certificate of death. And so sometimes you just don't even understand what their fate was, but here's the, the giveaway. My sister told me when I'm, when I pass on, I need you she never told me that she was sick. My sister, I believe, knew that she had cancer. We didn't know it, none of us. Um, she said, I know you you live in Florida, but if you could come up here and, 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 you know, file a suit. Well, I didn't even understand what that was because I said, well, well, surely, I don't know that. I don't understand that. So sometimes we never know what fate is. Well, I, I couldn't do it because many reasons, but... One, we didn't even know it, but, but apparently when we did ask questions, it was well documented. So she didn't tell us. She knew her fate, but we didn't know it. She didn't want to worry us. She didn't want us to know any of that. So sometimes we are affected by it. And I know her, her children and, and, and all of us that were left behind, we were devastated because she was just a wonderful person. So here's the next one. It says, how long does it take, does it or has it taken 
for you to get over major trouble, a hurt, a shift in your life. How long? You know, was it a year? Was it 10? Was it, you know, never? It's always something that kind of is in your the backyard of your thoughts, you know? I don't, I don't know how long has it been. And the last question is, when you initially hear of a major trouble or excitement, how do you handle it? You know, um, you know, and I, and it doesn't have to be a negative. How, you know, I'm quite sure that something positive has happened. And, uh, you know, how long does it sink in before it sinks into being, wow, that happened to me. That was actually very good. You know, uh, somebody just over in, I think, maybe two, two townships over one, uh, you know, a, a million dollar scratch off. Uh, well, I never play scratch offs, but I certainly would like a million dollars, wouldn't you? So I'm quite sure that that he, because it was a man, is very excited about the shift, the new shift that has been brought about. And sometimes we don't always get that. We 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 may walk through our lives. Um, in handling our fates, but it never may be may be assigned with a, a great monetary uh, uh, gift like that, because certainly that that was something that, you know, it was his fate to get, you know, that which was a positive fate. So anyway, those are the things that I had today to really talk about our winds of fate um, and the fact that we have to uh, understand that they may be a period of time where there's a positive um, and a negative to fate uh, and it may take us a long time to get over them uh, I say thank God that we can't that we don't know them because if I if I knew when I was going to leave up out of here I probably would be crazy all the time so I think that's a level of protection that we were given um, and certainly one that we can can rally in the fact that we don't know but when we look at fate, we look at our future, we look at it possibly having some adversities, we look at the fact that it will be temporary, and we looked at the fact that it, we will be enlightened by it. But also, in some instances, we can certainly say that there was enjoyment after the fact. Um, the questions, again, are how do you handle things out of your control that result in, there are results of your fate? Do you worry about your future? Um, how do you handle adversity as it relates to your fate? How long does it take or has it taken to get over your major trouble, your hurt, your shift in your life? And lastly, when you initially hear of a major trouble or excitement, how do you or have you handled it? I thank you for today. I really and truthfully do. I uh, certainly hope you will stop by again tomorrow. I do this every Monday through Friday at uh, 9 Tomorrow I'm going to do something on fathers um, because just like I did on mothers, tomorrow I'm going to do on fathers um, because I think it, it is something that we do um, need to discuss, um, but we'll discuss it in a way that really gives them what I call accolades for those that are, are uh, they stand up to the, uh, the call and their children are, are blessed by that. But anyway, I want you to have a great day. I want you to ask yourself, what is my fate? Um, do I worry about it? Or do I just handle every day, one day at a time, looking at the positive and the negative of my fate in such a way that I will not be stuck? So I'll ask you on the way out, are you stuck? We are all stuck, but it's temporary. It is absolutely temporary. I see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Be productive. Write these down and then go to my YouTube channel, Sandra L. Winborn, PhD. Thank you. Bye-bye.